moving right goodness, along. This is so I know. Flying. Last and certainly not Definitely least. Definitely not least. No. We okay. have the wonderful Megan Joy. 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 Absolutely. Well Haberta. <laughs> yeah, I've known Megan for years, and it's great to have her on the program today. And, and Megan is truly a bright light. She's well educated with, uh, with a master's from GW, George Washington University, from the School of Business and Public Management. And she's been in venture capital, uh, helping to uh, seed really uh, uh, conscious companies, working in clean environment, working with peace parks, working with change management companies to make a difference right now. And Megan, just uh, thank you for being here and grace us with some presents. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful wow. presents. Hi, John. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. My welcome, dear welcome, friends. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for welcome. having us today. Yeah, welcome. So why don't you talk a little bit about the marketplace? You've been involved in capitalism and conscious business. And can you kind of share with us what you perceive the landscape to be right now? There's a huge shift going on. It's been, it's been going on since the beginning of time when, when humans went on the path of consciousness out of the forest and into why are we here. So what I'm seeing happening in the business environment is people moving from the business as usual, you know, put your needs away to I matter, everyone matters. Business is personal. Well, that is a huge change in how companies even do their layout, how they do their org chart, how they do everything. So that's one major thing that I'm seeing. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. And how do you feel that young business people today are able to mesh with the older, the older echelon of business community? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I like to think of the brackish waters, you know, when the ocean is coming in and hitting the, the river, the river mouth, so the water is like this, right? That's what it's like. So you can't just say, how does that generation work well with that generation or not? It depends on the individual. So the individual, the old and the young, have to say, I care about what you have to say. I care about your perspective. I want to know the wisdom you've come in with. Old guy, young girl, whatever the combo is. There has to be that willingness. And then there has to be the willingness to listen to one another. Right. And respect one another. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Respect. So, we, you know, we can't help but notice that you are a woman. <laughs> and how does that play into your being into, you know, the, the workplace? Uh, you know, as opposed to being a man and, and all of that? Very good question. Um, you know, I really appreciated things that Melissa said earlier in this conversation. And if, if you haven't seen the movie Misrepresentation, please watch it. Yeah. It's an amazing movie about the beauty industry, but really about capitalism in general. So the huge push towards not only beauty, but, but it's control, right? So here we are as a feminine species, and we're 50, if not more than 50% of the population. And we hold the purse strings now in many countries. So we've, we've entered the workforce in a different way than any other decade has seen. So what's happening is the archetype of sister, daughter, vixen, wife, secretary, those archetypes are getting expanded mm -hmm. and people are having to see Oh my gosh, you know, this woman has, has leadership qualities that no man has had because she is a woman. There's inclusivity and there's transparency. Women are all about cards on the table. So it's a very different leadership style. Mm -hmm. And are you finding that the men in the world are more you know, receptive to your holding your rightful place side by side as equals? <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a, daily, a daily opportunity, but I will say there was one scenario. I was a CEO of a, of a LED lighting company, and I opened the meeting with all these lighting professionals and engineers by everyone connecting their heart center into the center of the boardroom table, and then we set the intention for the meeting and the mission of the day, and at the end of the six-hour meeting, these men many older than me, said that was the best meeting we've ever had because everybody was respectful, communicative, engaged, and their heart space was recognized at the start of the meeting. So <coughs> those are the brave things that women leaders are doing today that we need. You know, it's, it's a necessary component to functional business. Cool. 
Um, I, I agree with you, and I think that um, uh, I'd like to talk about transparency because I think transparency is really important, period, in yeah. every aspect of life. But in the business community that, you know, where business people usually wear their, their mm -hmm. mask, mm -hmm. you know, they hide behind that mask, and maybe they can be transparent if they feel safe. But um, how, how do you feel about just being totally open and transparent? How do I feel I mean, about how it? Do you, how do you see it fitting into business today? It's essential. What, who, who do you want to be? You're you. If, if we're talking about conscious business, you know, my definition of consciousness is presence. So if I'm present, but I'm trying to be him, that doesn't work. You know, that saying, she's beside herself, that's a real thing. You can go all day long <laughs> beside mm -hmm. yourself, or you can be in your body, incarnated, grounded to the center of the earth. You will be much clearer with what you have to say and how you see one another. It's very important. And how you're heard. And how you're heard. For sure. Yeah, whether people agree with you or not. Yeah, that's, you're that's up to them. They really, can't, they, they really can't say you're not yeah. you know, being totally honest with who you are. Mm -hmm. And how has spirituality impacted your business work, the, the marketplace for you? How has my, it is, everything. <laughs> um, how has it, you know, I lost my dad when I was very young, I was 24. So that was a huge impact. Matt talked earlier about the, the layers he had to unpeel and burst through to be his full self. Well, when my dad died, I took on a lot of masculine qualities. I had to go out there and I had to make my way and I had to earn my money and I took on a lot of layers. So my spiritual journey since 24 has been peeling off the, the masculine layers that were not mine and letting the feminine layers emerge. They were always there. They right. were always there. The artist, the, the herbalist, the spiritual seeker. I've lived in India. I've lived on sustainable communities. But in spirituality, it's a daily practice. There's no like, da-da, I've arrived. It's like, no, and today, <laughs> here are your challenges today. Here's your grace today. And it's always both. So that's, that is my understanding of spirituality and business. How that meets the, the boardroom or the organizational development day or the, the, you know, how you have a productive meeting with your team, it's the presence part. It's the presence part, it's the inclusivity, it's everyone feeling safe enough to say how they're really doing. Did they really finish that report on time? You know, it takes a lot of, of safety in a business environment for everybody to be at their highest level of productivity. And transparency. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're moving quickly here. We probably have, maybe have one last question or so. Yeah. What is your vision for what our world can be? If oh. You really were to. You have one minute. <laughs> and yeah, and just make it big. <laughs> succinct. Uh, big and succinct. Well, I think, let's see, big and succinct. Everybody will be doing what they are here to do. Everybody will be living in their body as conscious beings. Um, everybody will have their basic needs met so their ultimate creativity can emerge and come out and serve. Um, and there'll be a lot more regional focus of, of material resource management and governance and food security and energy. It will be much more regional, manageable. We got so global, things got kind of unmanageable. So I see the world vision is coming into, and knowing your neighbors, really being committed to where you live and the region you live in and, and the animals there and the plants there and, and how to um, manage all of those in a loving equal way. All humans are equal. Beautiful. Beautiful. Very beautiful statement. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks Meg for being here. Yeah, Megan, thank you so much Wonderful. for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.